amazing audience. We are live right now with Jeffrey Abbott. Jeffrey. <laughs> <laughs> we only just started and he has corrected me. Sorry. Is it because he's a host as well? I'm wondering. Awesome. Of course, we'll find out more. Right, but we have Jeremy Abbott with us, and I mean, you'll definitely tell us more. But Amanda Doughty did this again, right? She introduced us, right? Yeah, well, let, let's have some fun, Jeff. Jeremy, I think I'll call you Jeffrey a few times. Please, uh, excuse yeah. me. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> tell me, Jeremy, if you had to sum up which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time, what would you say it is? Um, fear. <laughs> Your talent. Yeah, I, I know Amanda, who connected us right. together. Uh, we have a radio show together here in Portland, Maine, uh, about craft beer in Maine. And um, so once a week, we sit down in front of the mics ourselves and uh, chat about beer in Maine here um, and, uh, and the impact that has on our state because it's a huge, huge economic impact in our state here. Right. Um, and. Uh, yeah, so I, I know beer, Amanda knows beer, we know each other through beer, and therefore I know you now. Through yeah, through beer, through Amanda, beer. So through Amanda through beer. beer. <laughs> <laughs> through beer, so I know you. <laughs> so who did you learn uh, the, uh, the other aspect of beer? In my country, beer seems to be something that, that isn't as deep as this, right? The, the rum side is okay, deep yeah. right oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah but the beer side doesn't go so deep like we have uh lager beers right and then most of the other beers are imported yeah but yeah it seems like it's like i'm seeing like a ton of things right Absolutely. Yeah, no, it's, yeah it's it's definitely in this in at least in this area and in other parts of this country certainly there uh, it's a culture it goes beyond just uh, being like oh we have lager we have an ale or what have you it's, it's very much a culture and it's part of the community find that here in Portland where the, the, the city first really became known as a food city, uh, but it was local food and then the local breweries were able to expand upon that and then the growth in the brewery industry here uh, to where it's really just all interconnected here, um, where the, the, the breweries play this role alongside the restaurants uh, to where people come here as tourists uh, and to see our city uh, and then they try these amazing local restaurants and every one of them has local craft beer on it. Wow. And, and you can get so much variety in styles. I mean, certain breweries choose to focus on this style or that style. And then other breweries like Rising Tide, where we're here at right now, they really do, as you see, uh, they have the variety. Yeah. Uh, and their tap list is a little shorter than it is at other times. Sometimes they literally have 12 different beers on tap. Wow. And there'll be like eight or nine different styles of beer in that represented. So, <laughs> um, uh, but it's really created this sense of community where people get together. And it's not about, like, some people are like, oh, I just want to drink because I had a bad day or what have you. And certainly we all have that happen to ourselves as well. But it goes beyond drinking for the for the effects of alcohol, where you're drinking to appreciate the craft that went into making it. I've realized that. And, and like you say, it, it's certainly in many parts of the Caribbean, uh, I don't know the Caribbean that well, obviously you do, <laughs> uh, that rum or what have you might be where they really put that focus on yeah. that craft. Beer. Yeah. Uh, it's not only beer, but beer is definitely a big part of it. Well, I haven't seen anyone uh, drunk, right? Yeah. Everyone, I'm seeing children here, you Absolutely. know, it's, it's yeah. really fascinating to see this model in, um, in beer drinking from me, from a cultural perspective, right? Yeah. Right? It sounds <laughs> as though I had some beer, right? Yeah, <laughs> <But> <laughs> yeah no, and it's definitely, I mean, like you said, it definitely ties in, that's that whole, that's that cultural thing. I mean, many of the breweries, you know, around here, it's it's they were started by you know, people with kids. They they, they have families, uh, and so the, the tasting room uh, in a brewery, uh, which here in Maine has only been a thing for about five years now, uh, that really was not. It's not intended to be necessarily a bar. It's not. I mean, you come in and it's, you know you know many of the people here and what have you, but it's not a place that people go to because they're trying to get intoxicated. It's the place that they go to because they're trying to appreciate what's done here. Uh, and, and with that in mind, I think it makes it easier to be more comfortable for people to bring their kids, yeah. to bring their family with them. Even if their family chooses not to drink, they have non-alcoholic options to drink, yeah. what have you, available here. And uh, and that makes it just a really different culture. Where did you learn the appreciation for culture from? Is it your family as well? Or uh, I mean, as far as, I mean, uh, I don't know what I learned from my family. 
uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, I mean, I, I personally have always been inclined towards trying to learn and appreciate about the different cultures in general. Uh, I love to travel. Yeah. I was literally like last week I was in Mexico City, two weeks ago wow. I was in Sweden. Wow. Uh, <laughs> so I, I love to travel and experience and see different cultures. Uh, and I mean, again, beer culture is not a nationality or what have you, but here in Portland, uh, it's certainly a part of the culture within the city. It's a subculture, if you will. And actually, as far as that subculture here in Maine is concerned, I learned about it literally right here. Uh, I, when I moved to Maine about six years ago, uh, I went to some bars, and there's some really nice bars in town. And that's kind of the point in my life where I'm like, ah, I don't want to just want to go sit at a bar with a bunch of people trying to get drunk. Yeah. Uh, I want a little more than that. Uh, and I literally stumbled across shortly after they passed the law to allow tasting rooms and breweries this tasting room. Uh, and, and met the people here, and they were amazing people. Uh, and from here I learned, oh, these other breweries also now have tasting rooms, uh, and it kind of expanded from there for me. And so that's literally, I can point to this specific place that we're at, Rise and Tide, where, where that specific aspect of culture in my life really started. Yeah. So. We should take a shot of this spot. Just let <laughs> people see what's going on, because sometimes, Yeah, it's true, yeah, amazing stuff going on here. So, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me invite you into my t imaginary time machine okay. that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Okay. Jeremy, what is your earliest childhood memory? Wow. We're going back. Going deep. <laughs> um, I feel like that would be probably being my, uh, one of my grandmothers who is now deceased briefly lived where I grew up at in Virginia. I grew up not here. Uh, and uh, I definitely remember as, I don't know how old I was, I just know I was very small, being at her, her house when she briefly lived there where we lived out in Virginia. Uh, and we went over there, we had the dog that was the dog I remember from being a child with us. And, Do you remember the dog's uh, name? Dusty. Dusty, there we go. From Dusty. And I remember I was sitting on my grandma's lap and there was this weird music coming from outside and it turned out it was an ice cream truck. <laughs> so she took me out there and let me pick out what flavor ice cream I wanted. What flavor uh, did you pick? Uh, it was chocolate. All right, all right. And, and I, chocolate was delicious. Still. So ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> Cookies and cream, chocolate chip cookie dough. These are all acceptable substitutions, chocolate chip. But chocolate is where it's at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, why do you think this memory is so clear? Um, I mean, I don't know, I always had a really good connection with, with that particular grandmother. I had a good connection with both my grandmothers. I never, she's the one that I at least spent a small time of my childhood living near. Hmm. Uh, I grew up in Virginia. One of my grandmothers always and still lives in Indiana. Uh, and this particular grandmother, while grew up in Indiana, lived with us in Virginia, near us in Virginia for a bit. Yeah. Uh, with us. And, and then moved on to Florida ultimately. But, uh, um, I, mean, I always had a very good connection with her. It was my, it was my father's mom, um, and, and uh, definitely always had a very close connection with my father before he passed. Uh, so I don't know. I guess all those things combined, that particular memory just stands That's out. That's amazing. Can I offer an interpretation to the thought picture you created in my mind with that okay. memory? Okay. Here we yeah, go. Cool. Are you ready for this? I'm ready for it. I love the fact that even back then, you were like the guy that needed to go out to find taste. I mean, it was ice cream then, right? Well, yes. But no, it's, it's, it's amazing, right? Absolutely. Yes. Uh, I'm always looking for that next step. I need to yeah. try this new thing. Yeah, this place. that's amazing, this right? I've been at this restaurant. You know, and the culture connected to it, though. Like, I mean, your grandmother, the legacy, yeah? yeah. The the breweries, the tap houses, right? Yeah. You, it, it connects, right? I mean, no, we does. yeah. yeah. I hadn't thought of it that way. Boom! Pointed out, but yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. If we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Ah, uh, okay, 12. Uh, let's see. That would be, as I recall, that was that when I was 12. That was I was playing baseball. Right. And uh, my dad uh, was a um, kind of like I guess part-time DJ on a local radio station. Right. Uh, that actually started broadcasting the. the it wasn't Little League, it was called Dixie League. All right. Uh, 
the Dixie League baseball games. That was the league I played in, and they would actually broadcast some of the games on a couple nights a week, uh, which in retrospect seems weird, broadcasting <laughs> a little league baseball game on a radio station, but they did it. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I remember the first time, I was probably 12 at the time, that my dad actually was broadcasting one of my games yeah. that I played in. Uh, and I, I remember that I hit a triple in that game. Right. And uh, I heard, uh, you know, the, the, uh, they actually taped that one so that I, I could listen to it after the fact. And, like, hearing the pride in my dad's voice as he's talking about, Abbott hit a triple, and yeah. it's, he's talking about me, and, and he's, like, broadcasting this, and he's talking about <laughs> it. And I'm, like, busting my butt from the bases, like, you know, going for this triple. And in and, and, and retrospect, when I was able to actually hear that, uh, like that was a pretty big moment, I guess, for yeah, me. Yeah, that's sweet. Uh, to hear to hear the pride in my dad's voice as he talked about this. Yeah, uh, and that I mean, largely probably stands out because it was literally, you know, uh, not much over a year after that was when my dad passed away. Yeah, uh, and so that's really a memory. That's that amazing. Out of my yeah, mind. yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> yeah, so. love it, love it. Yeah. All right, all right. <laughs> well, we've arrived at our destination, but before we get off of this imaginary time machine, there's a small declaration form, so it's yes or no, or you could pass, right? Okay. Have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? Uh, I mean, I don't have kids. Right. And yeah. uh, I'm uh -huh. not necessarily planning to have any, so in that way, no, right. but I mean, I certainly, I feel like I definitely have people in my life that I try to share certain aspects of my life with. Yeah. And so I guess that is kind of... You have, yeah. Are you married? Same thing. I am married. Do you have children? No children. You said that, right? Yes, I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's a declaration form. It's like customs, right? You have yeah. to tick, right? Absolutely. Do you believe in God? What's that? Do you believe in God? Yes. Do you have an inner circle of friends? Inner circle? Oh, absolutely. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? No. How about three hours a week? Or so less than eight hours a day? Oh, less than eight a day. All sure. right, all right. If you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents Jeremy Abbott, what would you say that is? Uh, just get out there and experience the world, experience culture, yeah. and, and enjoy life. Could I add something? Certainly. Don't let the ice cream truck pass you by. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Jeremy, this was a great you pleasure. Let's, let's see what they got going on. Right? <laughs> love it, love it. Hey, it's been a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? Uh, I mean, I think that last sentence kind of summed it up. <laughs> if you had the ice cream truck, which really put the icing on the cake. Love it. Pun intended. <laughs> Jeremy Adams, this is a great, sorry, Jeremy Abbott. This is a great pleasure. Thank you for being on what is inspired by 12 Minute Convo with Angel Jones. Boom! Love it. <laughs> this guy's amazing, folks. <laughs>